Hello and welcome to the latest video in my modern radio control helicopter series. If you've been watching along, you'll see lots of other videos on this thing. This is an OMP Hobby M2. This one came from Scotia RC up in Scotland here in the UK. So a big thank you to Steve and his team up there. They don't sell just helicopters. They sell the kits, the parts, and also some of the OMP Hobby VTOL stuff as well. Now I'll put a link down below if you want to go and have a look. But this video is to try and do something that I've been thinking about doing for probably 10 years. You'll notice on the front of this helicopter, there is a camera and there is an antenna. Yes, I've put FPV on it. Now, FPV on helicopters isn't a new thing. Lots of people have already done it, but I never have. This is my first adventure because helicopters are naturally quite shaky things and there's lots of power spiking going on but modern fpv equipment is quite small and lightweight and we can put fpv in even a 400 class helicopter like this without breaking into a sweat and keep everything looking really neat because for this all i have externally i have the antenna so as i'm flying around the antenna is always above me i've always got a nice clear view for nice reception i'm using a little kind of uh, micro camera here at the front uh, I may change that, but more on that in a moment. And then the VTX is kind of hidden away from here. So I thought what I would do is let me show you how I have done this in case this is something that you're interested in. I've put FPV on lots of my radio control stuff. I love playing with FPV. I put it on cars, boats, planes, wings, gliders, and finally helicopters. So there's a couple of things though to think about um, or I was thinking about before I started getting out the hot glue and the tape to try and figure out how I was going to make this all happen. The first thing I wanted to do was keep the setup pretty basic for the test. I didn't want to have lots of complexity. So all I need is a video transmitter, an antenna and a small camera. I also didn't want to have the helicopter looking really messy when it was all installed. I didn't want it looking like the Back to the Future DeLorean in Back to the Future 3 with lots of things kind of stuck all over it. I also wanted to be able to place the camera forward, as forward as I could really, on the canopy to help see under the blade disc in flight. The blade disc is pretty big on a helicopter, so it's inevitable that you are going to be looking through that blade disc a little bit. Because of the way the camera shutter works on modern CMOS cameras, you are going to get that kind of wavy line effect, but having it as forward as I can is going to limit that. Also, as I mentioned, I did want an omnidirectional antenna underneath the model. That's going to give me the best reception when flying above head height. And also, uh, it means that as I'm flying forward nose down, even if I'm flying towards myself, I'm still going to have that antenna in nice plain view for really good reception. I also want to use relatively lightweight pieces of modern FPV gear, the kind of stuff that I put in lightweight sub-250 wings, so to not add too much weight and also then to not potentially need more tail weight for central gravity. I have had to put a little bit of tail weight on here so the CG is perfect, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And I also didn't want to make a mess of the canopy because I might want to remove it uh, if it didn't work well and not leave a completely cut up damaged canopy so I could just go back to flying it normally line of sight. Now, the pieces that I've picked for this, again, these aren't things that I necessarily recommend, but first of all is I'm using this Atom RC video transmitter. The reason that this is quite handy, it has a little UFL connector for the antenna, we'll more on that in a moment, and it also will run off the main battery voltage. The battery in this little helicopter just happens to be 3S, so I need a video transmitter that will run happily directly from that voltage rather than needing extra things to step it down to the 5 or 9 volts that it might need. Second thing is the antenna. The antenna is one of the little Foxeer lollipops. You can get them with the UFL connector, so I can snap it directly onto the video transmitter and route it around without having to add lots of weight with lots of big bulky SMA style connectors. Last thing I need is a little lightweight camera. This happened to be the one that I got my hands on. This is a little Foxeer Razor. It isn't particularly high end, but it will allow me to pop it on here. And if it works, then I can upgrade it. 
Now, in terms of installation, it wasn't particularly tricky. Again, I tried to limit the amount of drilling and cutting into the canopy so that if I needed to, I could take all this gubbins off and the canopy would still look good. First thing looking around the canopy is there is, even in the smaller helicopter, more than enough room inside the canopy to have the, both the video transmitter and it to be clear of the battery and controller. Now I'm going to fit it into the right hand side of the canopy because the left hand side is where you would fit an auxiliary S bus receiver if you're using it in a model like this. Now, I did spend a bit of time testing the placement of the antenna so it clears the battery at the front of the lower cutout. However, it is where the battery is sitting in that lower cutout in the canopy, so I decided to drill a small hole with a Dremel and then use a reamer to open it up so that I could push the antenna into place, use a little bit of hot glue just to seal it and stop it from falling out. With the antenna in place, then I used some double-sided foam tape to attach the video transmitter on the inside of the canopy, and then to mount the camera at the front, I designed and 3D printed a bracket for the camera that kind of matched the shape of the nose and would allow me to pop it on there with, again, some more double-sided foam. The next thing then was how was I going to run the cable from the camera back into the canopy. I could have drilled another hole, however I decided a better way to do it would be to run it outside the canopy by using a little trick of using some black insulation tape. I can cover it in that to hold it in place and protect it, and also it then blends in so you can't really see it if you're, unless you're looking for it. Last thing to do was then to figure out how to power everything. I'm going to use my old trick of using the balance tap for the video transmitter. So you can buy these connectors from places like eBay and lots of suppliers, and these JST style connectors for the balance tap, if you connect to the two outside pins, watch your polarity, then that will give you the battery voltage at quite a low current draw, but that's absolutely fine for what we need for this video transmitter. But that allows me then to use the other connector on the battery. Then it was just a case of putting a little bit of hot glue on the back of the connector, heat shrinking it so it's nice and safe, and then we're ready to go. Testing it on the bench, then all we had to do was to plug it in. I was, wasn't going to do it with it connected to the model in case the magic smoke came out. Uh, all the wiring was triple checked to make sure it was good. Plugging it in, we can see that we have an image. The only extra thing that I did do is I did add an extra five gram weight on the tail. Uh, the center of gravity with the FPV stuff is almost spot on, but with that five grams on the tail, it's absolutely perfect. So it has, has added about 20 grams of weight in total, but that shouldn't cause a problem with the flight characteristics, particularly if the CG is in the right place. So the big question, Will it work in flight? Will I get lots of distortion for the vibration? Will the video transmitter be lots of static and break up from all the power spikes and things that go on inside a modern heli? There's only one way to try it, and let's try it out. And this is footage from a very, very quick hop that proves that it works. Not only does it work, it works very well. Now there is a slightly dull day. The camera itself isn't fantastic performance, but you can see the rotor disc at the uh, top third of the image. So I think I'm going to invest in a better camera for this. Go and buy a really nice one and pop it into that bracket at the front. I'll put links down below if you want to kind of follow along with this. But join me for a future video where I'll actually take this out and give it a fly. To fly it, it's kind of going to behave like a quadcopter in acro, but it's going to look really cool. So join me in that video and hopefully we'll have fun flying FPV, proper FPV first time in a helicopter. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.